Hey guys! Ever since I learned about the chemiluminescent reaction of nitric oxide with ozone, I've wanted to try this experiment. For my first attempt, I used a free-necked flask filled with ozonated oxygen and introduced nitrogen monoxide into it. However, I didn't observe any chemiluminescence. I repeated the experiment several times, both in complete darkness and with different methods of introducing nitrogen monoxide, but the result was always the same. The nitrogen monoxide reacted with ozonated oxygen to form reddish-brown nitrogen dioxide without any accompanying glow. I suspected the issue was insufficient ozone concentration, so I decided to prepare liquid ozonated oxygen. This liquefied gas has a much higher ozone concentration. I condensed a small amount of ozonated oxygen and lowered a tube into it to introduce nitric oxide. When I opened the cylinder valve, a small amount of nitrogen monoxide entered the condensed ozonated oxygen. Interestingly, the color in the test tube changed from the blue characteristic of ozonated oxygen to the blue characteristic of nitrogen trioxide. Did you notice something else during this reaction? When replaying, you can see a small flash, lasting a single frame. This confirms I'm on the right way. The issue is in the low ozone concentration. Next, I used a Dewar test tube, essentially a thermos tube that minimizes heat exchange with the environment. Adding ozonated oxygen to this test tube allows the oxygen to evaporate quickly, leaving behind the extremely dangerous liquid ozone. When working with high concentrations of ozone, Always use proper protection, since it can explode easily. Even when wiping the condensation from a test tube, must be done with thick clothing and a protective face shield. Now that almost all the liquid ozone has evaporated, and a large amount of gaseous ozone has accumulated in the test tube, I'll add nitrogen monoxide as I did in the previous experiment. Great, this time we saw a bright flash, followed by the formation of reddish-brown nitrogen dioxide. But what happens if we add nitrogen monoxide while there is still liquid ozone in the test tube? Will the flash be bright and longer, or will it cause the ozone to explode? Let's find out! This time I didn't wait until almost all the ozone evaporated, but added nitric oxide when a noticeable amount of pure liquid ozone formed in the Dewar test tube. As you can see, liquid ozone is extremely dangerous. Even a few drops can shatter a test tube into fragments. I'll tell you more about it in one of my upcoming videos about ozone, so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated. Now let's explore some more nitrogen monoxide chemistry. Nitrogen monoxide is a colorless gas that oxidizes rapidly in air, forming reddish-brown nitrogen dioxide. Here you can see the colorless gas turning reddish-brown at the point of contact with the air. But what happens when we condense this gas using liquid nitrogen? Look at these fascinating colors. You can see blue, green and even red. It's very different from all other liquefied gases. Let's determine which substance corresponds to each color. But first, let's see what happens when we add liquid oxygen. Will we observe red-brown smoke? How do you think?
actually know the low temperature of liquid oxygen causes the nitrogen dioxide to condense immediately. The result is a blue liquid which corresponds to nitrous anhydride, responsible for a blue color after condensing nitrogen monoxide. So, to eliminate oxygen's influence, I condensed the nitrogen monoxide in an inert argon atmosphere. This is what liquid nitrogen monoxide looks like a dirty green color. This color results from the presence of red dimer of nitrogen monoxide in the mixture. Liquid nitric oxide also oxidizes quickly in air, just like its gaseous form. Red dimers of nitric oxide can be formed easily by condensing it in the presence of a strong Lewis acid. For example, I used titanium tetrachloride. Just a few drops of this Lewis acid dimerized the nitrogen monoxide at its boiling point. Removing the test tube from liquid nitrogen reveals a solid red dimer, which melts quickly due to its low melting point. The red color also disappears rapidly. The next reaction is qualitative for nitric oxide. In this free-necked flask, I've prepared a solution of iron 2 sulfate, which oxidizes quickly in air. To prevent this, I keep an argon stream flowing through the flask. I introduced nitrogen monoxide through the right neck of the flask, bubbling it through the solution. The reaction involves aqueous iron 2 sulfate absorbing nitrogen monoxide to form a brown nitrosyl iron sulfate solution. Nitrogen monoxide, like carbon monoxide, has similar reactions. For example, when in contact with iodine pentoxide, nitrogen monoxide is oxidized to nitrogen dioxide, and iodine pentoxide is reduced to elemental iodine. When inhaled, nitrogen monoxide can bind to hemoglobin like carbon monoxide, converting it into a form that is incapable of carrying oxygen. Passing this gas through blood results in a dark crimson color, similar to the effect of carbon monoxide. Check out my video about reactions with blood. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, especially the reaction with ozone. I'm so glad I was able to show you that cool reaction. And of course, a huge thank you to all my patrons. Even a small contribution from each of you will significantly reduce my financial costs for producing each of my videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.